Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Well, today we're back on the door for that 1950 Chevy truck. This is part two. If you haven't seen part one, I'll put it right here so you can go back and check that out. Uh, we had an inner door panel rusted out completely, but the outside skin was perfectly fine. So it was kind of an unusual situation, but you know, we had to cut that rust out. And so that was part one. Today we're going to get it finished fitting it and get the uh, patch panel welded in and then actually do some filling on it and try to finish this off at least into the rough stage so we can move on to the other door. So let's just jump right to this and get this thing knocked out. Okay, finally we got this fitted on there. Didn't take all that much work, but uh, just a lot of slow going to make sure I didn't screw up. Uh, we got fitted on this end really nice. Pretty much duplicated the same thing I did here down on this end. So that's going to work out really good. So now we're ready to flange. And with these little drain hole, uh, little pop outs things they've got going on here, uh, this flanging tool will just barely clear it. Got to kind of slide it in here and turn it and they'll just slide past it. So let's go ahead and get this thing flanged up. I'm going to push it right up to the edge here and keep it tight since we kind of figured our length. looking pretty good. All right. Flanged it very nicely. Nice and straight along here. Looks really good. Okay, let's see how this fits. Get it lined up, throw some clamps on it. All right, fits really nice, really nice. Sits right down inside that uh, flanged area, the dip there. And uh, I was a little concerned that the patch panel might be a little bit long because you know the the uh, flangey tool makes a little uh, radius there and so it doesn't make a square corner and uh, I was afraid that was going to stick up into that corner but it's not it's feeling really good it's a little close right here but it is down inside there and if it was all I'd have to do is grind this line back a little bit on the patch panel make it a little bit smaller so that's not that big a deal but it's fitting really well uh, it's nice and flat and if I put my hand up in here it's fitting really tight. I can't even get my fingernail in between the two pieces of sheet metal on the back side. So that's, that's really good. So the, the next step will be to do some rust preventative before we move forward. And then we're going to get into putting some uh, sheet metal screws in here to clamp it all together. So when we weld it up, it's, it's uh, nice and tight up against each other. So let's, uh, let's take this apart and figure out what we're going to do for some rust preventative so this doesn't happen again. Uh, 70 years from now and I'll be long gone. All right, let's take a quick look at the inside skin here. And as you can see, it looks really good. I mean, for as rusted out as the inner piece was, you know, it's really hard to believe that skin did not rust, but it didn't. We got a little bit of rust down there and I'm going to take a wire wheel and we're going to jab it down inside there and get that cleaned up real good, blow it out. And then I'm going to get some of that rust conversion on a brush and we're just going to brush it down inside there the best we can. So we get to get as much protection as we can so we don't have to worry about the outer skin. And then I'll probably paint the back side of this uh, a little bit heavier coating on the patch panel too. And then hopefully, and then we'll have some, once we get this all ground nice and smooth, I'll use some spray on uh, weld through primer and let that dry real good. We'll do both sides. And then we're about ready to start fit, fitting up and clamping for welding. All right, so I got some of this uh, leftover the owner was using from Eastwood, this rush conversion. 
and we're just going to try to carefully paint this up inside here. It's going to run around down inside there, but I'm not, you know, I don't care. Doesn't have to be pretty, just needs to seal up what rust is in there and then uh, protect it. So I want to run it right up to the edge here. We're not welding up underneath here. We are and I'll clean it off anywhere where we're going to actually weld. It's a lot easier to just take the sander and sand that off after it's dry than to try to protect it right now. Got it out. We're going to go ahead and paint a little bit more up down and through this access hole here. Can't hurt. All right. All right. Let's get some weld through primer on this lip here. Okay, we're going to let all this dry. I'm going to go eat lunch and we're going to let it all dry and then we're going to fit these pieces and uh, get them welded. All right, I found some uh, little tiny screws to screw this down while I weld it. So let's just uh, get some holes drilled. I want to make sure the ends for sure are held down tight. Those should hold for sure. So now, instead of just putting the screws straight in, we need to re-drill these holes bigger. That way, the threads on the screws only bite into the base material and slip on this and pull it tight together. If you just try to drive a screw through there, uh, it could pull apart and then uh, tighten up only on this one. So uh, I'll pull it apart, find a bit a little bit bigger, re-drill those and get this thing screwed down. Okay, we got all those opened up a little bit so the screws will slip through there, but before we uh, try to put it together, I'm just going to take another bit, and now I'm just going to use that to uh, chamfer these holes to make sure that their burrs are gone. There's a little burr sticking up on each hole on the back side here. We don't want anything interfering with the super tight fit uh, between these two panels. All right, let's get it clamped down for the last time. Okay, we'll just drive these screws in. Being very careful since these screws are so small. Then I'll just use the screwdriver to finish them off, make sure they're in there good and tight. Okay. So feeling that right there, that feels really good. They are flush with each other. And I held the straight edge up there before I went ahead and drilled. So now all I have to do is I got all this uh, sprayable uh, primer on here, weld through primer. So I'm going to take the wire wheel and just clean off everything that's exposed. So when I weld it, uh, there's no reason I don't need weld through right here. Uh, it's in between the two pieces and that's where it's important to have it. Uh, and then I'll just, that way I get a nice super clean weld right there. So let me grab that real quick and we're about ready to tack this thing together.
Okay, the last thing to do before we weld is to hammer these edges down, the corners, to make sure that they're nice and tight up in there. And we got the tightest fit as possible. Now on these ends here, they're not exactly sitting flush, so I'm just going to tap them down a little bit. Until we get a nice tight fit. Get a clamp on here so it stays. Very nice. We'll do the same thing down here. All right, with the ends well uh, hammered down and everything's fitting really nicely, uh, I'm going to go ahead and reposition the door down a little bit lower so I can sit down while I'm welding. And then uh, we'll get this thing tacked and then welded. We're just going to go ahead and uh, just kind of stitch this thing together and then uh, grind it smooth. Okay, I just finished welding. I can run my hand right down through here. It's just warm. I mean, not hardly even warm because uh, I kept cooling it as I welded, as you saw. And I was making, you know, quarter inch uh, beads, maybe three eighths of an inch long, just uh, button up to the other one and moving, button up, moving, and just jumping back and forth quite a bit. So I don't feel any warpage or anything. So the test will be when we take these clamps off, if this thing turns into a potato chip on us, we know we screwed up. Nope, stayed right where it belongs, so it's in there really tight. It's almost like that lip's already on there, which is pretty good. So I don't have to worry about, you know, uh, trying to force this back down and getting that new piece welded on there. So this looks good. Uh, now we just need to grind, and uh, then we can start, we can cut this piece right here and get that welded on right on this edge right here, and then we'll be about done. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grind this real quick. I'm just gonna zip through it, and I don't wanna bore you with it. So we'll just blast through this real fast, and then uh, get on to the next step. Okay, all done grinding. I have the little Rolock disc too to, on the, with the 80 to smooth this out real nice. So you can see this bead right here, this corner, came out really nice. Now along this weld seam, it did pucker down a little bit and I could have run my beads a little bit shorter, but I knew that strip goes right here and I wasn't too worried about. We're just gonna put a skim coat of body filler on there. But it's important you guys know that if you can't dolly it from the other side, you're going to get a little bit of a, you know, the, the metal's going to pucker down right at the weld. And uh, you're just going to have to fill it. That's just the way it is. So uh, I know you see a lot of these guys doing it. It looks beautiful when they're all done. But, uh, you know, a lot of times when it goes to the body shop, they have to have to fill all their seams. So, and we got a little bit of low spot, a little too much heat right there. And I should have run my beads a little bit smaller maybe uh, you know quarter inch instead of three eighths inch long but I knew that strip was going to go over the top and it was going to have to get filled anyway so I got that and then this corner looks good right here it looks really good right in here we got those two pieces welded together now it, the last thing for us to do is to uh, make the strip that goes on here to replace that pinch uh, right here where it was bent over. And as you recall, we cut that off because it was rusted away. So I think we're gonna use what's left of the uh, patch panel. And it's probably not gonna be long enough to reach end to end. So we'll have to cut two strips and then just splice them together and then just weld it on here. So let's get going on that. Okay, I went ahead and cut that strip that we talked about. And uh, I was able to get one piece out of left over. I just straightened out the end on that piece of patch panel and then just cut a little strip out. You can see it right there. And now it's tacked on there. 
and I'll just use the MIG and we'll just weld right across the top here. I already did a little spot right here. See right there. So I'll just MIG, uh, just jump around, cool it off as I go and get this whole thing welded up and then we'll grind it nice and straight and that'll be about it. Okay, I'm hot down here. Looks good. Not so hot that I can't hold my hand right here. So uh, I'll bring you in tight, show you the welds before I start grinding, and then uh, we'll get this ground up. Okay, let's take a look. As you can see down straight down that line that is still nice and straight it's getting close so you can see my welds I got nothing to hide not the best welder in the world but certainly not the worst and I know it's real tempting when you start welding a uh, thin sheet metal and you get a good bead going to uh, just keep going but a uh, quarter inch 5 16 about as long as you want to go and then cool it right after Okay, let me stop right here. Now, my beads, what I'm telling you is okay on this lip right here because I know it wasn't going to warp, but they're still too long. Don't, don't go as long as I did right here. You want to go just long enough so you get a nice bead, a nice wetting of the steel, but not, you know, just keep going. If you go too short, then the steel won't get hot enough. You'll just basically be putting stuff on the top, not getting good penetration. So you want to put your, bead, your tack or your little bead at, at you know, a nice round circle so it's plenty of heat and then just move on. If you go too long, you're going to get too much localized heat like I did on my seam. And then it's going to be some, uh, some warping that you're going to have to deal with. So keep them small, but keep them good. Make sure you get good penetration and that's the key small penetration and then cool then move down so we're going to go ahead and get this ground i've got three spot welds that i want to put in i already drilled the holes for them but i want to get it ground and all done uh, and then we'll get the spot welds in and then we'll see how it came out okay we're going to start by uh, grinding uh, straight up on both sides now I ran a super tight bead on here. There's barely any sticking over the edge, which is nice. Um, but uh, there is a little bit, little blobs here and there. So I'm gonna grind very carefully along the face here and then along this face, and then we're gonna dress the top. So let me get the sides first, and then we'll uh, knock the high spots off the top. And I think I'm gonna clamp a straight edge on here uh, so I have something to grind to to keep, uh, keep this nice and straight. Uh, it's there's some, you know, up and down from the weld bead, so we want to make sure we get a nice, clean, straight line on this. Okay, we got, uh, got both sides done pretty good. I'll hit that with the 80 grit and really make it look nice. So I'm gonna take the grinder and uh, I'm just gonna knock the tops off all these just to kind of get me started. And then I'm gonna clamp that piece of uh, quarter by one on here 
just to give me something to guide so I, uh, I don't grind a little low spot in it somewhere chasing after a little spot in between the well. Okay, the idea is just to clamp this up here so it gives me kind of a, a guide. I'm going to have it just a little low. I'm not going to necessarily just grind on it and move over and just grind down to it. I'm going to use it more as a, just a guide to keep me honest, to make sure that uh, I don't start chasing after a low spot. Okay, uh, it looks really good all along here, except to right here. So I got just in between a couple of welds, starts and stops. Now when I weld it, I usually start on the previous weld and the weld forward. I don't start next to it, uh, otherwise you get a cold spot. So you start on t at the last third of your little short weld, and then weld your quarter inch or five sixteenths. But that leaves a little divot right there. So uh, the rest of this looks like it'll all come out. But we've got uh, you know five, four or five spots I need to hit again with the welder, and then we're good to go. So I'll hit those. I know it's straight, and the rest of it's done, so I can take this uh, hunk of steel off here, and I don't need that anymore. And it's you could do it by eye, you know, but um, I don't. I don't. I'd like to keep these lines nice and straight like they're supposed to. Uh, it's the bottom of the door. Obviously, you're never going to see it, uh, but I try to do my best to make sure everything stays nice and true. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to take a file. We got a few little spots here and there I need to hit with the three inch disc. But I'm just going to take the file and shape this edge here. That looks pretty good right there. I got a few little spots I need to hit with the three inch. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Let me bring you in close and let's uh, let's take a look, see how we did. Okay, let's see how straight it is. Looks pretty straight to me. Then we got this nice and rolled over. Getting close there. So it looks good. Got a couple little divots here and there. I'm going to go ahead and sand those out. But all in all, it came out really nice. Corners came out beautifully. Got that lip right there. So the last thing for us to do is to fill this uh, little puckered spot right here where I welded that patch panel on. So I'm going to grind that. I'm going to rough that up, and then we're going to get some body filler in there. Okay, we got a little divot, a little dinger right there. I'm going to fill, and then we're just going to fill along here. Threw some tape down. Help me from getting it everywhere I don't want to. Like always, we're squishing it down in there real good. Then we'll come back, make it look pretty. That is that. Okay, I uh, had to put the heat gun on this uh, body filler to get it set up. It's a little cool in the shop, but it's all set up now. And normally I wouldn't, uh, you know, for the video, I wouldn't put body filler on it and go that many steps. But I do need to place uh, the holes for this uh, weather strip, uh, kind of retainer strip here. 
And uh, if I drilled all the holes and I filled it, then I'd just fill in all the body, you know, all the screw holes and I'd have to find them again. So uh, I do need to get this done. Not to mention that I frequently complain to a buddy of mine that the guys that do patch panels and steel work, body work on uh, YouTube, they always just show you the steel work. They never show you filling, sanding, priming, and then, you know, finishing it all the way out. So, uh, I, you know, kind of uh, shot myself in the foot there and I'm going to have to go ahead and do it out. So I got some 40 grit on here. I think that's 40 grit. And we're just going to rough this out. Okay, there you go. You can see it's just skimming into that little low, low pucker. And I'm not gonna work this very much because this piece sits right about here or here. I think it sits about like that because the weather strip goes right in here and this kind of clamps, clamps it down. So really the only part you're gonna see is just this first half inch right here. So it's looking good. Now we just need to measure the other door and find all, locate all these holes. Uh, what I'll do is I'll measure the distance up and then I'll use this bracket itself, this strip, to um, help me find all the holes. And both sides are identical. This piece is the same on both left and right doors. So let's get to that. All right, let's finish this job off. So uh, I had the other door to measure, so that's uh, so I know exactly where to put the screws, uh, screw holes. Excuse me. So it measures uh, three quarters of an inch up from the inside of the bottom of the door, up. So all I did was put a couple of sharpie marks on there, and then I checked the hole sizes, and they're coming in uh, on the old door at about eighth inch. So we're going to go one size under that at uh, seven sixty fourths. It's better to be too small than too big. Uh, this, the sheet metal screws can just make their own way. We can always drill them bigger. So uh, all we're going to do is just line this up, and this fits just like this. So if you have one of these and you're, you're trying to figure out which way to put this strip to hold the weather strip down, it goes, I don't know if you can see that. So it goes with the J, kind of a J shape like that with the short end down. It's kind of counterintuitive. It seems like it should go like this, and it would be prettier, but... It's designed to go like this, and the owner did uh, quite a bit of research to double check to make sure that's correct, and uh, he sent me some pictures so we know that's how it's supposed to be installed. So all I'm going to do is uh, line it up on my two Sharpie marks there, and just center it left to right here, and uh, like I said before, this strip, are, they're identical left to right, so all, then all I'm going to do is just put a little... Sharpie mark right where the holes are. And then we'll just, uh, we'll get all these drilled, double check everything, and that should be just about it for this job here on this door. So let me check all my marks, they all look good. All right, let's drill it. I'm just gonna aim for the center of my marks there. The, the holes in the strip are slotted. Okay, let's see how we did. They all line up beautifully. So it's going to work out nicely. Get that weather strip in there when it's all put back together. And hopefully this uh, truck will be nice and quiet when he's going down the road. Okay, that just about wraps up this video on installing this patch panel in the rusted out section on this door and the inside of this door. It's kind of unique where the inside of the door panel was completely rusted through, but the outside skin had virtually no rust on it at all. So we had some uh, challenges along the way to get, uh, you know, get this strip in there and everything, but 
it all came out beautifully. The, uh, the little weather strip piece is ready to go. All the holes are drilled. And uh, we still need to finish the bodywork on this, but uh, once we get into the bodywork phase on this uh, door, then we'll go ahead and sweeten this up real nice. It'll look great. The inside of the cab is going to be painted black, so we want to make sure these door panels and everything else is uh, really smooth and ready for paint. But that's it for this one. Thanks for joining me here at uh, Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a video. We'll see you on the next one.